It's been kind of tough out there to be a Silent Hill fan these past few years, especially after the unceremonious cancellation of Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro's Silent Hills project back in 2015. Not much was known about the project to begin with, but the release of the celebrated demo, PT, had survival horror fans chomping at the bit. But all hope may not be lost. Sure, we may be a little desperate, but a recent tweet by Kojima Productions has reignited the fires of speculation in our hearts and minds for the potential of a future Silent Hill game. Is it a lot to work from? Absolutely not. Will we get our hopes up anyway despite the inherent risk of having them dashed all over again? Unfortunately, yes. Now all that's left to do is wait with our eyes peeled for more details that may slip out, and what could be a better way to kill time than to revisit the weird, wonderful world of the Silent Hill movie from back in 2006? Love it or hate it, it managed to cram as many references to the game series as possible into a bite-sized, two-hour-long package. And, in an effort to keep ourselves from falling too deep into a speculative rabbit hole, we've revisited the movie and cataloged the biggest ones. This is a healthy and productive coping mechanism, right? Right? Right off the bat, Silent Hill tosses back to the video game with that iconic and extremely eerie mandolin theme. The musical callbacks continue through the rest of the movie with songs by series composer Akira Yamaoka and vocalist Mary Elizabeth McLynn cropping up on the regular, you know, just to really emphasize the vibes. <laughs> While the movie follows the first Silent Hill game relatively closely in terms of plot, it pulled a few major switcheroos just to make things new. The first and most obvious were the name changes for the main characters, like demonic kid in peril Cheryl Mason, who became Sharon De Silva for the movie. But the name Cheryl can still be seen spray painted beneath the overpass that Rose runs under during the opening scene. Sharon's real identity is eventually revealed as the good side of poor, tormented Alessa Gillespie, who became the unwitting catalyst for Silent Hill's hellish reality after she was very nearly sacrificed for being impure. This, with a few notable differences, is exactly Alessa's story from the game, except in Silent Hill 1, she was sacrificed by her mother in an attempt to birth an eldritch deity back into existence. It's not that they particularly played down the whole cult aspect of the movie, but they certainly handle it in a different way. Tough as Nails cop Sybil Bennett wasn't actually a character in Silent Hill 1 originally, but she was added to the story for the visual novel adaptation play novel Silent Hill in 2001. Her role in the visual novel is basically what we see here in the movie. Before Sharon and Rose make the jaunt to Silent Hill, there's an ominous billboard boasting Corinthians chapter 6 verses 2 and 3, which references a verse from the Bible. It reads, do you not know that the Lord's people will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels? It's not exactly the most subtle foreshadowing. The game franchise plays fast and loose as far as establishing a look and feel of the town of Silent Hill itself, but the movie is more concrete. The idea of a small town shut down because of an ever-burning underground coal fire is actually taken from real life, a reference to Centralia, Pennsylvania, which has suffered the same fate in the real world since the early 1960s. Sadly, there are no monsters or portals to a hell dimension to explore, just a lot of toxic fumes. The town of Brahms is regularly referenced and visited in the movie as one of Silent Hill's neighbors. It was made canon for the game series a year after the movie's release in Silent Hill Origins. Silent Hill games traditionally use a radio that emits static as an early warning system for monsters being nearby. Rose never actually picks up one to carry with her in the movie, but it functions basically the same. And it's super, super creepy. The movie also takes the time to recreate some of the more bizarre camera angle changes that occur in the games as various protagonists wander around the town. While it's never been completely canonically established, most things aren't, being vague is kind of Silent Hill's thing, a white, ashy powder tends to fall from the sky in most Silent Hill games. In the movie, it's clearly ash because of the coal fires, but still, the net result is the same atmosphere. The movie uses the exact Welcome to Silent Hill sign you can find in the games. More of that subtle foreshadowing, this time care of Johnny Cash's classic country ballad about going to hell, Ring of Fire. 
Another location name check from the games, Toluca County, a reference to Toluca Lake, a giant body of water that Silent Hill sits on, introduced in Silent Hill 2. Rose and Sybil visit Midwich Elementary School, one of the key locations in Silent Hill 1. It even gets its very own giant sign just to make sure you don't mistake it for any of the other schools in the Silent Hill area. It's pretty convenient. For a town that is notoriously plagued by monsters, Silent Hill sure does love hotels. While the Grand Hotel in the movie is actually a reference to Silent Hill 2's Lakeview Hotel, it did become canon itself several years later in Silent Hill Homecoming. The gas mask wearing members of the cult were original to the movie, but they were later adopted to the game universe with Silent Hill Homecoming, where they got the name Order Soldiers. Her look and role may have been changed, but Dahlia Gillespie exists in both versions of the Silent Hill 1 story. In the game, Dahlia is much more like the movie's main antagonist, Christabella, the cult leader, Alessa's abusive mother, and so on. In the movie, she's a cast-out vagrant trying to save her little girl. Silent Hill loves a good hospital. The layout, name, and overall look may have been changed for the movie, but the hospital ward Rose Braves is clearly a nod to Silent Hill 1's Archimelia Hospital. But the name on the map denotes that it's actually supposed to be Silent Hill 2's Brookhaven Hospital. Because why not, right? Of course, the most well-known and iconic Silent Hill monster would make an appearance in the film. The movie's take on Pyramid Head, or Red Pyramid as he's more formally known, is considerably different from the games, where he debuted as a short, smock-wearing humanoid rather than a tall, super-jacked muscle man. Pyramid Head is one of the movie's biggest and most obvious departures from the Silent Hill 1 outline. Good old PH was, for a long while, only seen or explored in Silent Hill 2. Later, during Silent Hill Homecoming in 2008, the movie's version of the monster was adopted into the games. If Pyramid Head is Silent Hill's most iconic monster, then the Bubblehead nurses are a close second. They don't behave in the games the way they do in the film, but their overall look and design is strikingly similar. They, like Pyramid Head, are actually introduced in Silent Hill 2. Silent Hill 1's version of the nurse enemy is more commonly known as a puppet nurse, where they're seen as hunched over and controlled by a sort of tumor on their backs. The final Silent Hill 2 monster to make the move to the big screen is the lying figure, or the spitter as it's known in the movie. Resembling a person whose arms and head were absorbed into their torso, the lying figure has a nasty tendency to hide under parked cars in the game. In the movie, they spit an acidic sludge. The nurse in the red cardigan is never actually named in the movies, but fans of the first game will immediately recognize her as Lisa Garland, Alessa's nurse. In the movie, Lisa's eyes are gouged out, but in the game she's left to die, or maybe turn into a monster, or maybe survive depending on the ending you get, after an encounter with the game's main protagonist, Harry. Silent Hill has so many mannequins that they apparently just leave them lying around in abandoned hotels. They're entirely set dressing for the film, but in the games they have a nasty tendency to come to life as monsters, especially in Silent Hill 2 and 3. What are you doing to keep the dream of a new Silent Hill game alive? Did you catch any easter eggs that we missed? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe for more survival horror videos. Thanks for watching!